where I put on my reading glasses and look into them. Get real close. <laughs> Hi. How are you? Good. How are you? Doing well. You want to tell them who we are? Yes, I am Kaylin. And I'm Dr. Cynthia. And this is Intuitive Hypnotherapy Podcast. How what are, are we doing here? What are we doing here? <laughs> What's our purpose? Gonna, you know, we're going to chat with some people, meaning you and me and, you know, we're our people. friends. <laughs> and um, just tell them about stuff. what you do and, yeah, your stuff. Tell you how I uh, hypnotized myself through a root canal. That was amazing. Uh, yes. Um, but lately, and my daughter is such a great um, inspiration for me. And um, bless her heart. Because to be honest, I didn't have a weight issue until I went on my first diet. This is a true story. Oh. So I went on a... Um, uh, went on a diet um and and i'm talking about this because i'm thinking about programming and and mind over matter and things like this and i was at a church in the back in those days and i went to a church-based um uh, weight loss program it was terribly expensive and they had workbooks and all this other stuff and and i was Good God, five, seven, I was like 145 pounds. Hmm. Yeah, I would, I would like, I would like elbow you out of my way on the way up, you know, right. <laughs> push you down a flight of stairs <laughs> to get to that weight right now. Uh -huh. Just kidding uh -huh. people. I wouldn't ever, um, <laughs> maybe I would. No, anyway. <laughs> and so I got from like 145 to 141. Mm -hmm. And, um, but then the rebound happened, you know, I got busy with my first practice mm -hmm. and, um, I started to stress eat. Well, what I would do, um, and I still struggle with this a little bit today is I would get through my whole day, right? Single mom, taking care of my kid, taking care of my patients. I've always had a busy practice. Mm -hmm. Um, just, I just always did. Um, I've always had a referral practice. I just, I, I think it's just giving good care, giving a I, shit about people that, that show up for care and, um, um, and charging a reasonable fee. I don't know. I, I think mm -hmm. so. But um, the caveat is that I would forget to eat all day long. And, and I'd be stressed and I didn't understand about self-care 30 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't understand about taking breaks, saying no, you know, carving out time for yourself. And so it would be the end of the day and I hadn't eaten and I would eat all of my calories between yeah. six and 10. And mm -hmm. um, so moving out here, deep dive, you know, I'd been, um, to psychic school and, um, mm -hmm. uh, and I should really call it clairvoyant training, um, because the term psychic can have a lot of different meanings. Um, yeah, depending on, you know, your experiences and mm -hmm. movies you might've seen, um, the kind of training that I've had um, we don't tell the future, you know, or foretell the future because we believe you haven't created it yet. Clairvoyant means clear seeing. So I've been trained to see energy and everything is energy. Um, and so when you have spent time looking at energy and looking at at people and looking at souls, having a human experience. Um, it gave me an opportunity to kind of sit with where I was at um, in my health and fitness, not just from a physical 
you know, this is what it looks like on paper. This is how it's manifesting in my physical body, but also energetically, what was I doing to try to ground through food? Um, Mm -hmm. Why was that a um, helpful way to manage stress? And, um, and helpful, I'm doing the quote signs. And right. <laughs> and learning about Chinese medicine at the depth and breadth that I have, you know, and the different properties of food and everything, it's, it's really been enlightening. And so I have sort of my nerd brain. I know, you know, the properties of food and what Um, helps the body stay lean and what causes inflammation in the body, for example, Mm -hmm. and, um, and not just, um, and not labeling foods as good or bad. Okay. Right. Because in Western nutrition, you know, we have good and bad foods, but really looking at things as you know, this is the effect it'll have on your body Mm -hmm. and being neutral. Um, And that has been very helpful because, you know, we are complex beings. Um, Mm -hmm. So um, one of the things that I do is I try to have green in every meal. Oh, yeah. Because according to Chinese medicine, um, stress hits the liver and we're all living under stress, right? Mm-hmm. I, you're living under stress. I'm like, we're all living under stress. We just got right. through a pandemic or still tail end of the pandemic. Yeah. And so according to Chinese medicine, the liver is the organ system, the channel, the meridian that gets hit with stress first. We call it liver chi stagnation. And, um, When the liver, which as you may know, is a huge organ. And when the liver's upset, Mm -hmm. it likes to pay it forward. (laughs) And so so you can, and it's called overacting. So the liver can overact on the stomach and give you like ulcers or or heartburn, dyspepsia. Um, The liver can overact on the, on the, um, large intestine or the small intestine, either causing constipation or diarrhea. Mm -hmm. Um, The liver can overact on the heart, giving you um, palpitations or high blood pressure. So the color that treats the liver, and you can even wear it, you can wear emeralds, um, is the color green. So I try to make sure there's green in my food every day. Um, oh, that's a good tip. Yeah. Salads. Mm-hmm. Um, now salads are considered cold and, um, they can create inflammation. So everything balanced. And if you want to have a salad, have it at lunch. Um, cause that's right. when your digestive fire is oh. the hottest. Um, yes. And sometimes I make my infamous green drink, which is basically a smoothie, which is much power greens as you can smash into a you know the little <laughs> yeah. blender cup and then put fruits or protein powder or whatever else mm. uh, whatever else fit, you know yeah. suits my fancy for the day yeah. um but anyway as I'm yammering on have you ever had an issue with your weight have you ever had an issue with yeah um, so right before I found out I was pregnant with Laura I was actually like oh okay I'm kind of getting up there I'm going to start doing, I picked up, I won't name them, but a few different, like, all right, eat a shake for, eat, eat this protein shake for breakfast, eat this protein shake for lunch, and then have a, you know, balanced dinner. And it wasn't all Mm -hmm. bad. And then it was, you know, in between, you know, take this little vitamin drink again, not that it was all bad, but at that point I was Mm -hmm. like, okay, I need to, you know, kind of just start watching what I'm eating. I'll get on this plan. I'll Mm -hmm. drop what I want to drop. And then, then I got to maintain it. And I found out I was pregnant. So I'm not going to (laughs) lie. I was like, "Eh, maybe later. (laughs) Eating for two. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. Right. So after having Laura, um, 
I, I chalk it up to, I, I mean, I don't know, just your bodies are like amazing, but I nursed Laura until she was like 15 months and right around the year mark after she was mm-hmm. born, I was probably, I was probably lighter than I was before I had her, but wow. then COVID happened. I blame COVID. <laughs> and COVID. I have had a rough time, like, especially this past probably year or so, maybe a little bit more than that. I've been really yeah. like, and I'm working mostly at home. So I know what mm-hmm. it is. It's, it's just a, I'm not going to say I'm bored. Cause I did a lot of what you were saying. Like I'd mm-hmm. run, run, run all day, even being home. And then at mm-hmm. night, maybe about four five o'clock, I'd be like, oh my gosh, I haven't ate all day. So I'd snack on this hour or two later. I'd snack on this. Then I'd make mm-hmm. dinner. Then I'd snack on something before I went to bed. So I'd eat a ton before I went to bed. Mm-hmm. And then I found that throughout the day, I was like, well, I need to eat throughout the day, but it was every time I walked through the kitchen, mm-hmm. what can I grab to snack on? So yes. yes, it has absolutely been a struggle the past couple years. And I'd say probably last month and a half, I've started, I'm not even going to call it a diet. I've just started mm-hmm. just paying more attention to what I'm eating. Like you said, like putting mm-hmm. greens with everything. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to, if I want a cookie, I'm going to have a cookie, right. but I'm not going to have five cookies. <laughs> Solid. So, so yeah. So this past, I want to say six weeks or so, I really tried hard. Um, and I really, it just kind of was one of those one day my clothes just weren't fitting right. You know what I mean? I wasn't stepping on the scale, but I was like, then I said, that's okay. I'll just, (laughs) but yes, I've been struggling probably the last year or two. I really think just being home, you know, not being out and about and doing your normal lives. Nobody's lives have been normal the past few years. So it's been a struggle, but trying to balance it all out now. Right. Well, at the beginning of the lockdown, um, I, went on an eating plan that um, one of my um, uh, hypnosis coaches had recommended. And it was basically low carb, you know, lots of kale. Um, Yeah. uh, I don't do, I don't do great on keto because they they, um, uh, really, in a lot of the ones that I've seen, have you eat a lot of cheese and cheese is just, I love cheese, but it's just not good for this pod. Gotcha. And, um, so I was portioning everything out. I was making all my meals. And at the beginning of the pandemic, I lost 40 pounds. It was fucking awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so slowly I put it all back on. So <laughs> I feel it, got, it was great. It was great. It was great. And then I moved in with crazy lady and, you know, just kind of, you know, they say moves, job changes and relationship changes are some of the, the biggest stressors. And, yeah. um, that really, you know, and I'm human, you know, mm-hmm. but, and so I just, um, uh, so, but in so doing, um, I'm not as hard on myself as I have been in the past yes. when I've gained weight and, um, and to complicate things is this silly knee injury. And so, um, even the things, the active things I was doing, oh, um, yeah. complicate, and that's a common thing. You know, a lot of people have injuries or have illnesses and they just can't do shit like they used to. Um, But one of the things that I've been really present with is to not beat myself up. Yeah. Cause that doesn't help. That's been my big change. I think over this last, like, you know, six weeks or so, Mm -hmm. same thing that I'm like, again, if I want this, I'm going to have it. I'm not going to feel guilty about it later. I'm not going to punish myself about it later. I am stepping on the scale, but I'm not stepping on it every single day. And mm-hmm. if it goes up a couple pounds mm-hmm. and then down a couple, like I'm not going to, it's just going to happen. But yeah, that's, mm-hmm. 
definitely maybe a uh, yeah giving yourself a little bit of a i don't know break well and and i help people who have issues with with all kinds of things um but overeating weight loss and things like this and um uh as <laughs> As an aside, um, I don't trust any weight loss people if they've never had a weight loss weight issue themselves. <laughs> if you've that always so... been 5'4 and 120 uh -huh. and ripped, I'm like, you you cannot relate to me. Absolutely. <laughs> you you Absolutely. do not have the experience of bending down and having your pants rip. You that no, should be you, an interview question. Like, I need to see your before <laughs> picture, please. <laughs> You don't have one? All right, I'll go on to the next person. <laughs> I like that. Hundred oh, percent. Um, <laughs> well, I tried an app, and they had this this fitness advisor, and I asked her point blank. I said, "Have you ever had a weight issue?" And she said, "No." And I'm like, "Then how can you do this job? Like, how? Why? Why? Why?" Well, the answer is probably it. like she's that she or he you know it's because they may be and see and that's why i've never had a way to if you do a b and c yeah yeah god yeah. bless and with you um, i need to i need to see some experience <laughs> I, yes i want somebody that's simpatico um mm -hmm. but with that being said and being kind to oneself and being treating myself with grace and you know being a little objective like if I eat um, sugar, my knee hurts more. I found a, you know, I'm like, okay, stop eating sugar. And, um, and that's a great stress food. And we don't, I, th I've talked to so many people who really beat themselves up. They said, but I'm doing this for no reason. Oh. And I'm like, no, there, there's always a reason. Mm -hmm. If you're binge eating or you're throwing up or you're just unconscious eating or you're bored eating or you're eating right. foods that aren't the most nutritionist, nutrish, nutritious, sorry, mm -hmm. grammar police, um, <laughs> you're doing it for a reason. You may be unconscious to that reason, right? but there's a reason. Mm -hmm. um, but also, you know, being kind to ourselves, kindness, because and buckle up here's another synthism you can't heal what you hate okay you can't hate being fat and expect that that's going to help you get skinny at least long term at least in a healthy fashion this is my truth if mm -hmm. you found hating yourself to the point of exhaustion in the gym and now you're ripped god bless um you can't hate being poor and think that that's going to be your way to manifest. You can't right. hate your partner and expect that that's going to heal your relationship. Mm -hmm. Right. You can't, you can't heal what you hate. So reconciling what is going on in the background, leaning into whatever darkness you're experiencing is the key i believe to not just weight loss or it, but moreover just healthy living like being mm -hmm. comfortable in your body last week we did a, a sleep healing where we reconciled all of our bodies so that our physical body could have good sleep right we need to be nice to our physical body it puts up with a lot of stuff mm -hmm. <laughs> We put it through a lot of stuff. And the human frame is ridiculously resilient. Yeah. I mean, think about, I mean, people that have had COVID, been in a coma for six months and come out of it. And they're like, yeah, that's something that takes a lick and it keeps on ticking. <laughs> Absolutely. So being kind to ourselves being kind to the, the, that part of the journey, I think is an integral part in healing ineffective eating patterns. How do you like that? How do you like how I worded that? I know, I like that. <laughs> ineffective e eating patterns, absolutely. 
<laughs> so I am certified in the virtual gastric band. Um, the gastric band is the new um, uh, way they're doing their um, gastric bypass surgery. Gastric bypass surgery back in the day. And I had a patient that had one of the original you know, okay. um, bypass surgeries when it was first, 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 first coming around. Um, and I've had quite a few patients since that have had um, the actual gastric bypass where they literally go in, cut off most of your stomach, leave a little bit, uh -huh. and that's supposed to nourish your body. The heartbreaking thing about that is that the stomach is designed as it is for a reason. <laughs> mm -hmm. We need that stomach lining. We need the microvilli that are inside the stomach. We need the mucosal layer for us to nourish our physical frame. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we yeah. need it. So if we just cut part of that off, and you know, and I understand the reasoning by it, behind it, mm -hmm. I, I do 100%. Mm -hmm. um, but it's just like, it's a perfectly good organ. Just take better care of it and right. take care of you. Um, and so they evolved that into a gastric band where they just cinch it off and leave the stomach. Right. But they, they cinch it off. And now they've got just kind of a gastric sleeve where they cut off more of it. Um, and so, um, but the brain being amazing, I mean, if you can imagine that um, when somebody's grinding on your tooth and it feels like a cotton oh, no, thank you. <laughs> touching your lip. No, but if you can imagine, because that's what yeah. I did when I hypnotized myself for the, it wasn't a root canal, they were putting on a crown. Um, yes. You can imagine that you've been through a gastric band surgery and that your, your physical stomach is actually smaller you can be hypnotized to believe that you can only take in a half a cup of food at a time. And you can be hypnotized to believe that that is so. Um, mm -hmm. Just like if you have an actual gastric band surgery, um, although the virtual gastric band, there's um, far fewer side effects. Um, sadly though, a lot of people that have had the gastric band process, either real or the hypnotic one, can gain their weight yeah. back, right? So um, I myself hypnotized myself to be um, uh, averse, to have aversion to cheese, because I love cheese. Um, wow. So good. Um, <laughs> And so I hypnotized myself to believe that every time I looked at cheese, it smelled rotten, even, you know, even if I just opened the package or, yeah, um, it was no good. but I had a gal that I used to work with and, um, she had long brown hair and it was everywhere in the office and she did a lot of muscle work. So she had ultrasound gel and massage creams and everything it just on everything on all the equipment it was it was oh. difficult and so imagine that and imagine long brown hair stuck in it <laughs> gross but it was her office so you know okay. I, I didn't have veto power for so <laughs> because that was so unsettling to me I used that as the visual cue to imagine oh. that her brown hair and goop was in cheese. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, that'd be a quick, no, thank you. Yeah, so aversion therapy works. And, um, and for people that I help with weight loss or weight loss, you know, part of the, the process is aversion therapy. And what I like to do is find something with their permission that they are uniquely averse to. Okay. You know, like some people hate the smell of pickles. Great. Let's use that as an anchor 
for okay. when you want to eat birthday cake or something you know what if your birthday cake smelled like dill pickles yeah now some people would find that fascinating um me <laughs> not so much huh <laughs> not so much um so um so anyway so aversion therapy works imagining that your your stomach is smaller um actually works and, it, and it's wonderful um uh, but what i'm finding as i help people um is that if we don't address the cause if we don't address those soul wounds, if we don't address what is stressing you out how to give you tools that yes you can try to ground through a bag of potato chips or you can breathe you can mm -hmm. drink a big glass of water you can make yourself a cup of tea you can sit you can pick up the phone and call a friend you know we can replace those those stress mechanisms with something that's more healthful you know we do can you, hmm? do you tend to like put that in as you know if somebody says hey i'm interested in this virtual gastric sleeve or band mm -hmm. is that something that you say absolutely 100 percent. but also like do we want to talk about the root issue here i mean obviously 100 percent. we have to right but yeah, that's, that's, why, that's something I can imagine. You've got to like strongly encourage that, you know, let's do it and then let's see what caused it so that after this, it doesn't, you know, yeah. come back. Because, yeah, 100%. it's the same with any diet. Like I've done diets before, dropped a lot of weight, been excited. And then mm -hmm. I'm like, I'll just maintain it. But mm -hmm. yeah, eventually. Yeah, I'll just, <laughs> you know, comes back. We've got, we've got in and out here and it's not as appealing to me as it once was. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, I can just go through in and out once. It'll be fine. Be, um, right. What's your what's your um, go to best hamburger uh, place in Ohio? Ooh, hamburgers. Uh, five Guys probably. We've got mm. Five Guys here. I don't know if you have that there, but oh man, we did. I don't know if it's still around, but yeah, uh, you know, Five Guys is definitely. Those are some good burgers. Yeah, I don't know what they do to make them different. I don't know what they put in them, but they're delicious. <laughs> probably because it salt. tastes just like a burger. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, probably. Oh, probably a lot of salt. <laughs> I don't know, but yeah, but yeah. So no, I think that's like with anything. If you don't figure out what triggers you, then you're just gonna, you know, go back. Unfortunately, it might be a while. Might be able to keep it off for a long time, but yeah, yeah. So it's, um, um, and if you can, you know, and if you've never had a weight issue, God bless. I love you so much and tip of the hat. Um, uh, if you have, and I know we've been yammering on for a minute, um, <laughs> but it's, it's, it's going to be like, geez, well, get to yeah. it, <laughs> <laughs> we put the time, the meditation starts in the show notes. So <laughs> <laughs> right. you can skip ahead today if you need to. <laughs> but this is a complex, this is a complex um story. And I try to give all of my clients space to tell their story. Mm -hmm. Okay. Safe space to tell their story. And because again, nothing starts for no reason. We don't do anything for no reason. Everything has a reason or a cause. So in today's meditation, I thought what we do is um, uh, do a little hypnosis, do a little meditation, a, a little healing on self, um, and really extend to ourselves that grace. And then yes. um, uh, I thought maybe we do a little timeline travel. And um, timeline travel is, um, it's not really past life regression it's this lifetime regression but you can go back on your timeline and see when the first time it was that you over ate or ate to excess or when you started 
to put on the weight and you can give yourself whatever healing you needed and, and forgive yourself for that moment if you need to. And, um, uh, and then, you know, in the present moment on the timeline, you know, give yourself whatever healing grounding you need. And then because we can, we can go forward on the timeline and see ourselves at our ideal weight and health and, and picture that and get that impression in our mind and know that we can work towards that with grace and ease. So nice. You want to play on a timeline? Absolutely. With the express. So we could, I, weight loss is the term that gets people's attention, but what do we want to do? Why don't we want to call this in the affirmative healthy eating, loving your body. What are we going to call this? Your body. Loving the body yeah. that you're, what's your, cause everybody's ideal body is going to be different than the next on a scale, but it's what, what do you feel? Where do you feel? Let's do it. Indeed. And if you look at Laura, right, look at how Laura eats, right? She's going to eat when she's hungry. She's going to stop when she's full. Right. Right. So have a little, you know, childlike whimsy and, um, uh, and were you part of the clean plate club? Yes. Oh, cause the starving children in China. Yep. Yeah. You don't get up from the table. You eat what we made. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, let's do a healthy little. You don't get up. You finish. Yep. Oh, my stepmom used to make goulash. Oh, it was. Oh my gosh, was horrible. that your? I didn't like goulash either. That was my oh, like. Oh my god. Oh, and she used yeah. to put cans of whole tomatoes in it. So these big gloppy slime. Ooh. Yeah, oh. and then they're warm, and <laughs> it was that and fish sticks for me. But that's because you know now it's funny because you know I've discovered like the grown up like good fish sticks. But yeah, fish sticks and goulash. Yeah, can't do, mm -mm, can't do it. <laughs> I I had a friend back in Colorado that used to call fish sticks floor sweepings. Cause they were all the, the goopy bits of, of fish that fell on the floor and they just gross. gross. <laughs> Formed I mean, them that's just... not an aversion right there. There you go. There you go. Like particle uh -huh. board of fish. <laughs> mm -hmm. We did say come for the chat. We didn't say how long the chat would be. Right. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> okay well whatever minute this is it'll be in the snow notes get comfortable don't be driving right now um don't be operating heavy machinery um but you know finish your sandwich and come back um anyway so get in a comfortable comfortable chair comfortable chair feet flat on the ground if you can you want to lie down that works too just get comfortable and as you settle in say hello to your body say hello to your physical body you might pat it you know you might touch your arms give yourself a hug um pull a cover around you or you know and just love up on your physical body for a sec Say thank you to your physical body for putting up with you. Thank you, physical body. Thank you for letting me have this human experience. Thank you for the journeys we've been on. Thank you for the adventures. And give yourself permission to be a little in awe of your body. Think for a moment of all the cool things that your physical body can do because you have an opposable thumb. That's awesome. You can open a jar of pickles. You can tell someone, good job by giving them a thumbs up. You can make the okay symbol with your hand. You can caress 
your child's face. You can sign the deed to your new home. All the cool things that you can do with your hands because you have an opposable thumb. The human form is pretty amazing. And in some writings, they say it's wonderfully made. That may be an understatement. So as you sit or lay there in your comfortable place, just be in awe of your physical body. Even if you have an infirmity, a condition that makes your body different from others. Be okay with that. And know that you got your body because you chose to incarnate. You as a soul chose this body in this lifetime to have these human experiences with a group of individuals you find yourself around. And that's really amazing. I believe it was Einstein that says 90% of success is showing up. And by incarnating into a body, you showed up. So you get an A just for getting here. That's amazing. So take a moment and just be grateful for your physical form. You might even be happy because of it. And maybe by the end of this meditation and hypnosis session, you might even revere your physical body. So take a moment and take a deep breath. Yeah, do that again. Take a deep breath. Oxygenate the bod. Feel how good it feels just to take a deep, lung-filling breath. Moving the diaphragm down the torso a bit. Exhaling fully, letting out some of that stale air. And notice how this simple act of taking a deep breath allows your body to relax. Simply expanding and relaxing the lung field, expanding and relaxing the diaphragm. Sends triggers to the vagus nerve that are calming to the central nervous system. And wouldn't it be great if you were stimulated to breathe every time you felt stress, every time you wanted to stress eat or unconsciously eat, or even eat quickly or too quickly? What if you instead We're triggered to take a deep breath. And let it go. What if eating more mindfully was just that easy? Just that sedate. 
just that compelling. So as you sit or lay there in a comfortable place, continue to breathe as deeply as is comfortable and allowing your body to comfortably relax. And bring your attention to the chair or chaise, whatever you're laying on or sitting on beneath you. A hammock on the floor in a bed. And notice how wherever you are, the chair you're sitting on, the floor you're resting on, the bed or the hammock, Notice how it supports you. And allow whatever device you're using to support you. And allow yourself to feel supported as you're being supported. And notice how that support allows you to relax even more. Allows you to feel even more comfortable. Even more grounded. And at this moment, you're just breathing and feeling supported. Isn't that a wonderful sensation? What if anywhere you went, anyone you spoke to, any situation you found yourself in, what if you could feel this relaxed and this supported? Yes, you can. So as you take another deep breath, Put your attention as a point of light behind your eyes and in between your temples. This is your sixth chakra, your third eye, your center of knowingness. With your eyes closed, it's as if you can look at the world from behind your eyes. This is the hub for your clairvoyant skills where you can begin to see the world more clearly, where you will begin to see the world from behind your eyes. And truly see better with your eyes closed because you'll be seeing with your sixth sense, your sixth chakra. So be a point of light in the center of your head. And if anyone's in there with you, kick them out. And in the next moment, look around your space from the center of your head and see the edges of your aura, your bubble, your energy field your personal space and choose a color for your bubble today. Choose a color that feels good on your physical body. Choose a color, any color but white or black. Make it transparent or opaque. And then in the next breath, create your grounding cord. It can be a tube of light, the same color as your bubble, 
that connects from the base of your spine through your chair or where you're laying, through all the layers of the earth, all the way down to the center of the earth. And the center of the earth we'll imagine is a lawn or a meadow, a field, where the grounding cord that is a tube of light can ground strongly, firmly into the center of the earth. And the center of the earth we imagine is neutral energy. So simply by grounding, you're grounding into neutral energy. So whatever might be stressing you out, worrying you, garnering your attention, simply grounding into neutral, can be very calming to the body and very calming to the nervous system. So be in the center of your head, in your bubble, grounded. And notice how good you feel. Allow your heart rate to slow. Allow yourself to feel safe here. In the center of your head, grounded in your bubble. In your mind's eye, see a staircase of five steps. And at the bottom of the staircase is your resource state, your subconscious mind, your awareness, the tools, your gifts. Your subconscious mind is always there to protect you and will always tell you the truth. So at the top of this five stair staircase, feel the floor in your mind's eye under your feet. Imagine a handrail and feel that handrail in one of your hands, giving you additional support as you step down from step five to step four. Deepening your sense of relaxation, deepening your sense of comfort and support. Step four to step three, as much as 10 times deeper into relaxation. Still in the center of your head, still grounded, still in your bubble. Going deeper and deeper into trance, that safe place. Step three to step two, deeper down, even still. Step two to step one, all the way down into this safe place, this comfortable place, this relaxed place. In this deep resource state of your subconscious mind. Imagine in front of you on the outside of your bubble a timeline. This timeline could go left to right up to down, front to back. In your timeline, imagine one direction is going in the past. And in the other direction is going in the future. And this is a timeline of your life, your lifetime in this body. And when you have your timeline, say hello to the timeline. And give it a sprinkling of gold energy to clean it off. Allow the center point of the timeline to be today, this present moment. And in this present moment, in your timeline, see your present time body. As if you're looking at yourself. Say hello 
to your present time body. Send it some validation, some praise. Good job for getting here. Good job for being willing to look. Good job for being willing to sit and heal yourself. Tell your body it's amazing and that you're amazing, that you're worthy. You're so courageous for being here today. And send yourself whatever other validations come to mind for you. What else you need? And in this timeline, I invite you to go back to the first time that you remember that you used food to ground or to accept or in any way that was less than healthy. And get your first impression. You can't do this wrong. And so in your mind's eye, as if you're hovering over the timeline, you're not in the timeline, you're above it. Go back to that time, the first time you remember when you had an unhealthy relationship with food, whatever it was. See yourself in that moment. And give yourself whatever healing you needed in that moment that you were using food to either avoid feeling whatever you were feeling. It might have been uncomfortable or sad or unconscious. Or maybe you ate to soothe some discomfort, some heartache. Maybe you were just unconscious because your blood sugar was low and you forgot to eat all day. So you just had a bit of a feeding frenzy. Whatever the circumstance was, give yourself some grace in that moment, in that time. Give yourself some love. Give yourself the healing that you needed in that moment. Take your time. It might be complicated. There might be layers. Tell yourself that you're okay. Tell yourself that it'll be okay. Ground that version of yourself at that time. If you were aware of guides and angels, that we all have. Allow that version of yourself to see the support that was around him or her at that time. Guides, angels, other support, other tools, other options. And let him or her they know that it's okay. Tell them that they are loved and they are created from love and that love will heal everything. 
Let them know how wonderful they are, how beautiful they are, how appreciated they are, how valuable they are. Give whatever healing that version of you needed. If they were fearful, give them grace and safety. If they were sad, give them comfort and peace. If they were worried, give them support and assurance. Whatever that version of you needed in that time, give it to yourself. And whatever else that version of yourself needed in that moment, the grounding, the consciousness, the healing, the love, the support, the community. Give it to that person, that version of yourself. In any part of that experience, that time, that continues to wound, or continues to bring shame or be dismissive. Go ahead and heal that off. Go ahead and heal that away. And keep the learnings. What did you learn from that experience? What was the lesson? from that experience. You get to keep the learnings and heal the wounds. And then when you're ready, thank that moment in time, in your timeline. Be grateful for that. and then say goodbye. Allow that moment to disappear off of your timeline. And go ahead and bring yourself forward over your timeline and give that healing, those lessons to your present time body that you see as you hover over your timeline. Heal the wounds, keep the good stuff. And in the next moment, go forward on your timeline. Perhaps to later today or maybe tomorrow. And see yourself later today or tomorrow with the healing that you've just given yourself. See how you react and respond to have given yourself a healing over the first time you remember having an unhealthy relationship or an unhealthy moment with food. See how you address it today, later on today or tomorrow with the healing in place. And see how you feel, see how you look. Maybe your appetite is smaller or you've dropped a couple of pounds. Look at that and be, be appreciative of the energy that you've moved and healed. And see yourself later today or tomorrow 
feeling good about yourself, feeling good about your accomplishments, feeling good about the ability to heal and heal so profoundly. And the courageous badass that you are by willing, by being willing to look at some really deep stuff. You're willing to peel away the unconsciousness. Take the lesson and heal the wounds. That feels pretty good. Look at your posture. Look how you're carrying yourself. You're kind of a badass. And as you heal, see yourself in a week from now, having healed that old wound once and for all, having taken those learnings, go, yeah, I can apply this today. I have choices when I need to ground or need support or need comfort that are healthy for me. Literally making healthy choices. See yourself, maybe you're even thinner. Maybe your sleep is better. Maybe your body aches less. Because you're eating food that nourishes you and supports you, fuels you, and not as a tool for comfort, support, or grounding. Maybe you eat till you're full and stop once you're full. And then move that timeline out a year from now. And notice how by healing this one moment in time, has had this glorious ripple effect. And in a year from now, see your body, see it thinner, healthier, fitter. Maybe recovered from an injury or illness. Notice the ripple effect of having addressed those things that sometimes wound, sometimes stress us out, sometimes when we worry and see the healthy choices of being present and grounded and see how that is manifested in your body a year from now and be proud of those changes, proud of those accomplishments and all the other times that you chose consciousness instead of old behaviors that maybe did not serve you or your body. And be proud of yourself for your accomplishment. So go ahead and say hello to your future self and know that what's happening today in this moment is helping you get there and doing so easily, gracefully, consciously. So go ahead and hover over your timeline and hover back over yourself in this present moment. And then when you're ready, go ahead and allow that timeline to disappear. And still being in the center of your head, take those learnings, take that healing and call it into your physical body, your present time body, where you're sitting. And notice how good it feels to heal yourself. How good it feels to just be quiet for a time and give to yourself and care for yourself and love for yourself. And you can do it by using your imagination. Turning off the analyzer for a moment. Loving up on yourself. And when you're ready, know that these changes you've made are permanent. You've healed yourself in a profound, profound way. And you're a light to your friends, to your community, to the world. So when you're ready, see that staircase in front of you. Feel the floor beneath your feet in your mind's eye. Imagine in your mind's eye a handrail for additional support. 
And as you walk up the staircase, you're going to take all this healing, all the learnings, all the blessings, all the consciousness with you. And the healings, the wounds are just that, they're healed. From step one to step two, you start coming back into your body, maybe wiggle your feet and your toes. Step two to step three, maybe you shift in your chair or where you're laying. Feeling markedly different in your physical space already. Step three to step four. This is really cool. You've made a dramatic change and healed something very deep and profound. Step four to step five, eyes open, awake, alert, energetic, ready to take on the day, knowing that you had the courage to change yourself, alter your past, and heal your future. What do you think, Miss Kaylin? Mm, thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. That was a real a good, feel good. I mean, not that they, the others aren't, but that's a, like a, man, I could take on the world. <laughs> right? You got that, like that kind of like, oh, got a feeling. It's good. Mm -hmm. It's good, positive. Yeah, I can take on the world today. <laughs> yeah. I like the timeline. It's, that's a little NLP. Um, uh, but as I said, you know, in the clairvoyant training I did and, um, NLP and hypnosis, there's a lot of overlap in the tools and that's um, just kind of imagining that you can go back in time and, and heal an episode, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And then like, keep the learning, keep the lesson. What's the lesson? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah. Don't lay on the couch and eat until mm -hmm. you fall asleep. <laughs> right right yeah i think my uh, yeah my biggest takeaway i think from today is just us that just give yourself some grace like it's it's okay <laughs> yeah. yeah you're still lovable fall off get back up right right no Yay. i feel great i appreciate it all right. All I love right. doing this with you. Go You're the soak best. up some sun. Oh, good. Thank you so much. Thank hey, you. Good. Wow. That was a magical sound. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Love you. See you later. We'll love you too. We'll talk to you soon. Bye. Great. Bye.